Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's movie time. What do we have here today, Dan? We are watching the sci-fi classic Blade Runner by Ridley Scott. Yes. And I think this is the first time for both of us, especially because this is a the director's cut, the final cut. I'll be interested to see how this one goes then. Let's go find out, fam. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Enjoy, y'all. Replicants were used off world as slave labor and hazardous exploration and colonization of other planets. Replicants were declared illegal on Earth under penalty of death. Wow. Uh -huh. Special police squads, Blade Runner units had orders to shoot and kill. This is not called execution. It was called retirement. Well, I mean, they're androids. Yeah, when you don't consider them human, why not? This is the pass. For us now, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's L.A., all right. Looks like L.A. from Demolition Man. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I don't know why, but it's giving me old-school Dune vibes. A little bit. The big landscape kind of yeah. reminds you of the dunes, yeah. Yeah, just kind of moving into it. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I like the way that looked. Those great special effects. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a massive building, though. Yeah. I answer as quickly as you can. You're in a desert, walking along in the sand. What desert? Doesn't make any difference what desert is completely hypothetical. But how come I'd be there? Maybe you're fed up. <laughs> the tortoise lays on its back, its belly baking in the hot sun, beating its legs, trying to turn itself over, but you're not helping. What do you mean I'm not helping? Why is that, Leon? Because I don't know what a damn turtle is. <laughs> Only the good things that come into your mind. About your mother? Let me tell you about my mother. Oh. Oh. Okay. Don't ever talk about my mother again. <laughs> Your mother's in a desert on her bed. Do you help her? Oh, God. Ah, good to see you, Mr. Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey, there's Edward James Olmos. What is he speaking? He say you braid runner. Tell him I'm eating. Captain Brian Toga. Brian, huh? Well, I guess I'm done eating. I guess so. So much for that meal. Yeah. All these buildings feel so massive. They are. That's part of why you got what looks like environmental issues. Probably. They jumped a shuttle off world, killed the crew and passengers. You're gonna spot them and you're gonna air them out. This is a bad one. The worst yet. I need the old Blade Runner. Hmm. Little origami maker. Mm -hmm. Tortoise. That's Leon. Ammunition loader on intergalactic run. He can lift 400 pound atomic loads all day and night. Oh my god. Nexus 6. Roy Batty. Combat model. Optimum self-sufficiency. This is Zora. She's trained for an off-world kick murder squad. Mm, you don't want to mess with her. Yeah, I pass on this job. <laughs> All these guys could kill you easily. Yeah. The foreskin job is Pris. A basic pleasure model. Did you say the foreskin? Okay. Pleasure model, yes. Yeah. The designers reckon that after a few years, they might develop their own emotional responses. So they build in a fail-safe device for your lifespan. Where are they at with that right now? I can say, just let them die in a few years. Yeah. Themselves. I'm loving the way this looks. I know I've said that already, but it's great. So s foggy out there, though. Oh, this is where the replicants come from. I'm Rachel. Deckard. It seems you feel our work is not a benefit to the public. Replicants are like any other machine. Have you ever retired a human by mistake? That's a fair question. Mr. Deckard, Dr. Eldon Terrell. Demonstrate it. I want to see it work. On you? Try her. Nothing would make him happier, right? <laughs> it's your birthday. Someone gives you a casket wallet. And report the person who gave it to me to the police. Good answer. You're reading a magazine. You come across a full-page nude photo of a girl. Is this testing whether I'm a replicant or a lesbian, Mr. Deckard? <laughs> Both. <laughs> How many questions does it usually take to spot one? 20, 30, cross-referenced. Took more than 100 for Rachel, didn't it? She doesn't know. How can it not know what it is? Hmm. You're planting memories. Well, they're, they're withholding the truth. If we gift them the past, we create a cushion. Planting memories, yeah? You're talking about memories. Correct. Who's implanting these memories? I wonder what they're using for memories. That's a good question. How the hell do you do something like that? <laughs> I don't know. What's in this tub? I don't know. It looks gross. Yeah. Skin flakes? Fingernail? I don't know. All right. oh, Dude. God's sake. <laughs> really? You just had to have that fifth appendage, didn't you? <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
Oh, God. It's low pan. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fam, it's that guy right there. What is he hooked up to? Good question. I'm not going to bother him. No, that's going to mess you up, though. Oh, I think I know what that was doing. That was pumping warm air into his coat. Mm. And now he's going to freeze to death. Yeah. Incept dates. I, I don't know such stuff. I just do eyes. <laughs> you Nexus, huh? I design your eyes. Oh, interesting. He is official. I guess so. Questions. I don't know answers. Who does? Tyro. He, he, he knows everything. One man they can't get to. Go figure. Sebastian? He, he take, take you there? Okay. I haven't heard that name yet, have you? Mm mm. Jumpy, are you? Oh, she was just in there. Wow. I think I'm a replicant, don't you? It's me with my mother. No, it's a fake memory of you with your mother. Yeah, we can make pictures that come in the frames, even in the past. Remember when you were six? He showed you his. And when it got to be your turn, you chickened and ran. Remember that? Mm. How many people have I heard that from? <laughs> Those aren't your memories. They're somebody else's. They're Tyrell's nieces. Oh, that's where they came from. Okay. Yeah. I figured they were coming from somebody. I say, they had to be real yeah. memories, yeah. I made a bad joke. You're not a replicant. I'm sorry. Go home. She's feeling an action, a proper emotional response. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that something they were fearful of? Well, they said there's a possibility they could develop their own. Yeah. Truth hurts sometimes. If you're gonna have human emotions, you gotta have to know that inconvenient fact. Right. Well, there's Daryl Hannah. Mm-hmm. She's hard to miss anywhere you go. <coughs> what? Hey. What is all that about? He just minding his his own business. What's your name? Chris. Mine's J.F. Sebastian. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> what? I think she's waiting for him now. I'm hungry, JF. You want to come in? I was hoping you'd say that. That's the easiest infiltration ever. <laughs> yeah, she's going to take his eyes, probably. Mm-hmm. Oh, what? are these his toys? Good evening, JF. Good evening, fellas. All right, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> Just a tad. What about your friends? I have some, but I have to find them. I'll let them know where I am tomorrow. He has no idea how much danger he's in, does he? No, he does not. Which is weird considering he's the one that designed these things. Not to say you don't know your own creation there? Apparently not. Or else he only worked on the internals. Maybe. He probably never actually saw what they went into. Yeah. This just turned into legend. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. It's <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. Right. <laughs> Are we sure you're not a replicant too? Whatever those skills were you found in the bathtub. Oh, it's part of a dress, maybe. Stop. Oh, who are you? Something wrong with her. Yeah, that looked like discoloration in the veins, kind of. Yeah, maybe she's reached her four-year limit. There is a maker mm. serial number, mm. not fish. Snake scale. Snake. So the snake's a replicant, too, then? I guess so. Well, that would explain the unicorn. Hmm. Artificial snake license XB71. Who'd you sell it to? Not too many put up parts at 20. Buddy, you better cooperate. Look, man. Down in front of sector, China. They didn't take much. Kathy <laughs> Lewis presents Miss Hillary and the Snake. Watch her take the pleasures from the serpent. Oh. What? We're getting quite Roman here, aren't we? I don't like the sound of that. No. I'm from the uh, Confidential Committee on Moral Abuses. <laughs> Jesus. Have you felt yourself to be exploited in any way? How do you mean exploited? Were you asked to do anything that's lewd or unsavory? Or you mean besides the snake? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. That's an interesting hair dryer. All right. Well, that's probably a regular hair dryer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. She's not buying your story. Perhaps she's a replicant, too. I'm pretty sure she is. Oh, yeah, she is. There's no way she'd be able to do that if she wasn't. She's gonna kill you. Oh, you got lucky. 
No, but he found a trail of one of them, huh? Yep. Oh, Duck. I'll be damned. You found her. He actually caught up to her, really? You just going to shoot her in public? I guess she's not running. She keeps trying to blend in with the crowd and it ain't working. Get out of the way! Meanwhile, he probably wasted somebody else. <laughs> as big as that crowd is, he probably did. Oh, you oh, got her. got her. Yep. So that was one of the four, then? That's one of the four. Jesus. Is she going to go down or what? Not easily. Looks like she's taking two shots to the chest. Yeah, I'd say you got her. Oh, that's Where's a tattoo. tattoo. Yeah. Okay. Decker. B26354. Is he going to get two in one day? The way things are looking, he might. It's going to be a busy night for him. Hey, you'll have been well worth the uh, worth the price, if that's the case. <laughs> Good learn from this guy, guy. He's a goddamn one-man slaughterhouse. That's what he is. Four more to go. Three. I thought there was three, yeah. Yeah. The, the, that skin job you VK at the Tyrell Corporation? Rachel. Disappeared. Vanished. Didn't even know she was a replicant. All right, well, she wasn't part of the original job. Yeah. No, nah, man, you're not adding amendments to this. Yeah. Well, how did they find out Rachel was a replicant? Did she go around telling everybody? No, probably because he questioned her and discovered it. Leon, how old am I? You're dead. That's how old you are. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, jeez. More than you. He's strong as hell. I think 400 pounds would puncture that, but... Oh, yeah. Nothing is worse than having an itch you can never scratch. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> as do I. <laughs> Jesus. He's not even trying. Time to die. Can I die in my sleep? Ooh. Oh. Oh, she got him for you. Wow, this is a good shot. You realize he was going for the eyes? Yeah, I saw it. And yeah, he's going to do it in the worst way. <laughs> wow, thank you, Rachel. Jesus. Oh. Those backhands really got him there, didn't they? I guess they did. He was begging to spit out a tooth. What if I go north and disappear? Would you come after me? You saved his life, why would he? But somebody would. And that's the problem. Honestly, the best thing would be to have him come after you and just not finish the job. Mm. You know that Voight comp test of yours? Do you ever take that test yourself? Mm. I'd be curious to see the results. I'm about to say, this movie's really good at making me question what is and what isn't. I guess she knows how to play. Okay, well that's kind of nice. I didn't know if I could play. I remember lessons. I don't know if it's me or Terrell's niece. Well, right now it's you. Yeah, Deckard, let's not forget that she is a replicant. <laughs> well, she may not have those emotions either. Right. Okay. This is getting a tad aggressive. Yeah, I don't care for that part. He just kind of looks a little crazy right now. He does. Did it have to look so non-consensual? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is basically coercion. Yeah. Say so you kiss me. Kiss me. This is wrong. This is blackmail. Yeah. I feel like Harrison Ford wouldn't have to work that hard back then anyway. He shouldn't have to, yeah. Not a street rat anymore, are you? Now she's a raccoon. <laughs> Looks like the Hamburglar. Oh, God. <laughs> How do I look? You look better. Just better? You look beautiful. <laughs> what is that going on here? <laughs> the robots know something. Hi, Roy. Uh, this is the friend I was telling you about. This is my savior, J.F. Sebastian. You live here all by yourself, do you? Yes. I mean, I got the toys. They kind of walk around. <laughs> So by yourself. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that upsets him. Some you think? I was just going to make some. You think he's onto him yet? You know, you, you better figure something out, because they're going to kill you. <laughs> What's going on? There's only two of us now. We're stupid and we'll die. No, we won't. You can tell they're, replic they're replicants, though. Just... They're, they don't they don't quite have 
have that emotional their threshold. mannerisms feel just a little, little bit flat yeah. yeah i noticed too in the darkness there's a very slight um glow to their eyes okay what generation are you nexus six ah i knew it because i do genetic design work for the terrell corporation yeah. show me something be careful what you wish for man <laughs> well done yeah, any cheerleader can do that. I can't do that for <laughs> shit at all. <laughs> you are not going to do Oh, yeah, she is. <gasps> the thing is boiling hot. <laughs> if we don't find help soon, Pris hasn't got long to live. We can't allow that. Will you help us? I can't. We need you, Sebastian. You're our best and only friend. I don't see that you have much choice. We're so happy you found us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm fearing, fearing for J.F. Sebastian's life right now. Yeah, just a little bit. At the very least, he feels like a hostage in his own house right now to me. Which he is. Yeah. What seems to be the problem? Death. Well, I'm afraid that's a little out of my jurisdiction. You... I want more life, Father. I see the glow you're talking about. Yeah. The coding sequence cannot be revised once it's been established. Why not? Any cells that have undergone reversion mutation give rise to revertant colonies. Oh, so he's just screwed. Pretty much. Oh. Interesting. Oh. He's gonna crush his skull? Hands so Oh, no, not guys. Oh. He made that slow, too. He couldn't kill him faster. He said there's nothing they could do. What are you going to do to him now? Sebastian's of no use to them, so... That's too bad. Well, now, may as well go cause some evil, huh? I mean, they're back to square one. There's nothing they can do to prolong their lives. Yeah, you're on borrowed time. Yeah, but of course, you just killed the most important man in the world, so everyone's going to be after you. Body identified with Tyrell as a 25-year-old male Caucasian. Name Sebastian, J.F. Yeah, you better go and uh, deal with that. Hello? Hi, is J.F. sir? Who is it? Oh, this is Eddie, old friend of J.F.'s. Uh, I'll take that as a yes. She's just going to try to blend in in there. That's one of the toys? That'd yeah. be interesting. That's a good plan. That's something you don't know what is or is not part of his toy collection. That's what I'm saying. You don't even know what's human and what's not. Some morally questionable things there we need to discuss. Mm, lots and lots of things. Good You're about to be attacked by toys. <laughs> They're just going to ignore the guy walking in? Okay. I think they're a little messed up right now. Look at how well she blends in. Mm hmm You'd never know. It's a haunted house. It feels like a haunted house, too. Yeah. He needs to clean this place up a little bit. Just a tad. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. oh, my. Oh, yeah, she's got the jump on you. Oh, sheesh. Oh, oh she is so close to snapping oh your neck. God. You gotta the turn around. Oh. Look, I'm sure there's no place he'd rather be, but not oh, like this. Yeah. Kind of turned into a horror movie here a little bit. <laughs> oh. Okay. It was a dumb idea to set up for that attack. She's going the way that Ash went <laughs> in Alien. Oh, God. She is, isn't she? And to think, that was the foreskin one. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fight the leader. Yes. Good lord, that transformed the entire scene. <laughs> yeah, he's waiting for you. Oh yeah. Well, now he's got nothing left to lose. <laughs> oh, come on, you had him. He did a Jedi jump. <laughs> come on. Oh my god! Oh, he's gonna play piggies. Oh no. This is for Zora. Oh. This is for Chris. Oh! Ooh. I'm right here, but you've gotta shoot straight. You got it with two broken fingers. <laughs> now it's my turn. I'm gonna give you a few seconds before I come. Oh, I guess he got him. He did. One, two. He's just toying with him. Yeah, he is. Chris. 
He really cared for his friends, didn't he? He did. Well, I think they were all each other had. Yeah. I can't say I blame him. Yeah, those, there's that weird emotional threshold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, how, that's what it should sound like. <laughs> That does feel like a horror movie. It does now. You're in this dimly lit, decaying place, and there's a guy howling in the distance. He's like a wild animal. Oh no! He lost his weapon. I can see you. How did you get out there, but he can't? <laughs> Fair question. Not yet. Is that kind of like the rigor mortis setting in? He's probably malfunctioning because he's running out of time. Yeah. What are you about to do? Oh! Oh! He's making a weapon out of that hand? I don't know, I think he's trying to... Ma trying to loosen it up a little? Probably. Six, seven, go to hell or go to heaven! Oh, there you go. That might work. He's not quite as sharp as he was. He's also not trying as hard either. I think he's toying with him still. Okay, then, too. yeah. Okay. Jesus. Alright, time to pull a Jackie Chan and jump across the street. Ooh. He's just gonna follow you out there. What does he care now? <laughs> that was irrational of you. Not to mention unsportsmanlike. Where are you going? Trying to get away from you, man. Uh -uh. Yeah, I would not be trying to climb this building. I can't believe he climbed that. He did that with broken fingers. I know, that's what I'm saying. They had to be so hard to do. He's there. He knows exactly where you are. Where are you gonna run? I'm about to say, you're a... Alright. Well, he actually did jump to the building. Oh, no. He can't do it. <laughs> he's used up too much strength. <laughs> oh, he's got himself a little dove. Holding it by the damn tail. <laughs> say, where did that come from? <laughs> Jesus, man, what a desperate situation. Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? It's what it is to be a slave. Uh, he's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> he's just making that drag out all the way to the I end. He caught you at the last second. Oh, with the nail hand. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing he loosened that up, then, didn't he? <laughs> he's going to need it, yeah. He's not letting go to the damn pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what the deal is. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the ten hours of gate. You lived a life. Mm -hmm. All those moments will be lost in time like tears in rain. Yeah. It'll happen for everybody. Yeah, it will. Time. To die. I was not expecting that. So he's gonna die like that. Well, I guess you were right, Dan. Maybe he should have just tried to talk to him. That's all he wanted was somebody to understand what he was going through. Yeah. He was lonely in this. He wanted the opportunity to share his memories with somebody else. So they'll live on. It's kind of sad. Damn. You've done a man's job, sir. Oh. I guess you're through, huh? No thanks to you. Finished. Thanks and goodbye. <laughs> Can I get some medical attention? I did have two fingers broken. <laughs> yes. It's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? He's right there. Everybody dies. Yeah. Replicants or not, they all die. You know what? He makes a good point. What? I almost forgot about her altogether. Rachel. Yeah. Rachel. She has to know it's not safe to stay here, right? Yeah, if she's a loose end like that. No sense in worrying about it now, though, I think, right? By law, replicants can't exist, so... But they do. <laughs> she, okay. Yeah, she's fine. There we go. Do you love me? I love you. And trust me. I trust you. Can we stop repeating what he told you to repeat? <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't sound very genuine. Yeah, this is starting to get weird. It's been weird for about 30 minutes. Yeah. 
Uh-oh, he's been there. Yeah, he has. He could have done it if he wanted to. It's a unicorn, too. Ooh. Too bad she won't live, but then again, who does? That's question, that questions his memories now. Mm-hmm. No. Don't do that to me! <laughs> <laughs> well, that was really good. Mm-hmm. All right, so that was actually a really good movie. Mm-hmm. More than anything, I love the environment and the world building in this movie, I think. I can say the environmental aesthetic was really neat because it had that futuristic feel to it, but it, it was grounded enough to where you knew everything that was going on. You didn't feel really out of place with it. Sure. And the story was really easy to follow in this. I thought it would be incredibly complex. And it, were, it had complex questions and, mor and, and conversations about morality, I think. Mm -hmm. But the story itself was a very simple one. Yeah, and it wasn't a whole lot to it. Like, even the amount of detective work that Harrison Ford did, it wasn't all that substantial. Most of the replicants just kind of fell into his lap. <laughs> Which was a good thing, because, I mean, he didn't have to go search the entire city for them. Right, so, right. They all seemed to be pretty centralized there. Mm -hmm. There were two people we never saw again. I guess we can just assume they're dead. The little guy making eyes in his little frozen meat locker there. Sebastian, yeah. Well, and Sebastian. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and the little pan guy, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. This this guy and Sebastian, we never saw him again. I'm just going to assume that they probably killed him. Sebastian, I'm pretty sure he was dead because we saw the two replicants there using his house at the end. He was nowhere to be found. The other guy, they probably did have to kill just to make sure he didn't forewarn anybody they were coming. So, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, because it's like uh, replicants sighted in this area. Right. Lock it down. Right. So, yeah. So, you've made the point that this movie brought up a lot of moral questions. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Two things that immediately came to my mind is, you know, the whole debate around AI. Because these are basically artificial beings. Certainly. Physical artificial beings. Right. The big debate right now is, you know, AI is going to replace people. It's going to be a detriment to society. And here we see them being a detriment in the fact that they, they're going crazy. They are killing people. But that's not really by design. That's just how they end up being. And that kind of raises the second issue, or the second thing that really kind of differentiates this between some of the other AI movies we've seen, because there are a bunch of stuff that came out in the 80s dealing with like artificial intelligence. You had like War Games, you had Terminator. And one of the things that I thought you know was different about this is how it kind of humanizes the AI more so than kind of saying, you know, yeah, they're threats, but you don't feel like they're necessarily bad people. Right, especially there at the end, you knew that uh, Rutger Hauer's uh, character had murdered people. Mm -hmm. uh, you knew that they were trying to prolong their lives because they had fail saves that that were just going to put an end to them. Mm -hmm. And there at the end, you saw the humanity inside of him. All he wanted was to be known, really. So, right. wanted somebody to, I guess, to have to have some kind of some kind of feeling towards his or have some kind of sympathy towards his, his plight. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, the two, the two of us are big Star Trek fans, so I think of like Data when I look at these characters. Oh, sure. Because, you know, Data, you know, he was obviously an android, but all he wanted to do was be human. He wanted to experience human emotions. He wanted to be treated like a human. And in a way, that's kind of what these guys are like. They've been, they were created to be human. They were acting the way that they were supposed to act. All they ever wanted was to be treated as human, but they were being used as slaves. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it asks, but that's a really big moral question here, like, how far can you go with AI before you're basically just torturing a living being that you've created? Yeah, because that was the whole point of the failsafe, was because, as you said, they were they were in fear that they would develop their own human emotions, which, to me, is an evolution. Mm -hmm. And whenever a creature goes through evolution, it's almost like gaining sentience or whatever. At that point, there has to be some kind of uh, reckoning. You can't just keep slaves like that, no matter what they are. Mm -hmm. So clearly that's what they were, when one way or another. Yeah, because they, they said they're being used for off-world work. You know, one of them we saw was more or less built to be a prostitute. Some of them were built to be laborers. Effectively, they were being used to serve a social need that they could be given without, without any kind of respect for it. And, then, and I was questioning Deckard there on that too, because of the way he was kind of forcing himself onto Rachel. Mm -hmm. And that's what it felt like he was doing, even if she... Even if she consented to it, it almost felt like it, what would have happened if she didn't, though. Right, because... You know, that's what it felt like, because even there at the end, she was still just repeating him, probably... For me, it could have been out of fear. I mean, that's the thing. You don't know if she's just taking his cues and doing what he wants her to do because she's designed that way. Yeah. Or if she actually is developing those emotions. Exactly. And it, it makes his actions very questionable, because, you know, is he just being... 
an aggressive lover, or is he pretty much just forcing himself on this woman now? That's a good point. It'd be interesting, because there's a Blade Runner 2049 out there, mm -hmm. to see where that's evolved to as well. Right. There's got to be something beyond just emotions in that. At that point, you have to wonder how much they've evolved, because 2049 would be, what, 30 years after this? Something like Tech that. has to have advanced considerably. Yeah, and their environment has to have gotten much worse, too. Presumably, so. yeah. But I, but I was going to say, you, you mentioned androids in, uh, in Star Trek, Data, for instance, mm -hmm. but there's also the droids themselves in Star Wars, mm -hmm. and they're not treated much better than slaves either most of the time. In fact, they almost make an emphasis on how much they're not respected. Look at look at the cantina on the in Moss Eisley. Right. You know, they don't they were telling them your droids got to wait outside. We don't want them in here. Right. And it's, right? yeah. It's weird because they the droids have personalities like you can talk with them and have a conversation with them and do anything like you could with a normal person. And they serve a pretty necessary function in their lives. Right. And you know, they serve as companions. Like they they protect you, you protect them. It seems like a really good relationship there. Yeah. But then when it's convenient for you as the human, you can just go and wipe their memory or shut them off or whatever you want to do. And it's, you can keep the little uh the the on yeah. It. yeah. It's a really it's a really weird relationship in that way. Right. And this and this movie kind of emphasizes all of that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, it just puts a human face on it. Yeah, is what it really does. And I kind of felt bad in that instance when Deckard was sent out to go kill him, mm -hmm. because I, at first I was kind of on his side. I'm like, go get the bad guys. Mm -hmm. But then I was starting to feel less and less like they were bad guys. They were because they were being hunted. Right. I'm like, and they're doing their best really to try to save their lives. That's why they tracked down what J.F. Sebastian. Mm -hmm. Because because of his uh, biogenetics work, yeah, bioengineering there, it's like well you have to have some kind of answer for us here. You but, would think, but yeah. I guess they never could figure it out. But, I, wonder, I wonder how many other replicants there are out there that are hiding. I mean, Deckard's still in business, so they they got to be out there somewhere. Yeah, that's his whole function is to track them down and kill them. Yeah, but I think I think Rachel, you know, made the perfect point when she was asking Deckard early on, "Have you ever accidentally killed a human?" Because realistically, how would you know the difference? Mm. Yeah. The design to be so human-like, how would you know that you didn't just accidentally kill somebody who was kind of weird? Exactly. And that's the other question that this brings up for me. And I was saying it, it's got me questioning who's real and who's not. Mm -hmm. Even Deckard there at the end, you remember when uh, when he found the paper mache uh, unicorn in her jacket? Yeah. Didn't he kind of daydream about a unicorn? It's like, well, are we, now it's got me questioning, Deckard, are you real? Or are you a replicant? I can say it seems like a an implanted memory in a way because obviously we know they weren't real but then we also know they're replicating you know animals so who's to say they didn't make one so it's, it does leave you kind of hanging there okay maybe they get along so well because they're both replicants maybe they don't and that's one of the things i like about movies from from back then mm -hmm. they make you question these things this is a hard thing for them to do nowadays and i don't understand and they that. don't necessarily give you an answer to it either no they, they leave the, they leave it to your interpretation right right i love that Love that, love that, love that. Yeah, I guess we're going to be hanging on to questions like that for a while, because I don't know what Deckard is now. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's another question of morality. It's like you've got this guy programmed to believe he potentially is human. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, that you actually, you, you know, you're actually so, you're so real, you believe you're real, and they've programmed you to go out there and have no sympathy of, or no qualms about killing yeah, your own Kill kind. your brethren, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a very good point. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then again, we as humans, like, we've been, for humans killing humans, that's, they've been doing that forever. Right. But I mean, how are you, how do you know how another species is going to feel about it? I was going to say, if they ever found out, there's probably going to be hell to pay for that. Probably. You're certainly yeah. no friend of the replicants. Mm -hmm. but one of the things, too, that I really liked about this film, and you had pointed it out, too, was just the acting. Even though they were supposed to look human and act human, there was like a really slight dullness in the way that they reacted that you could tell they weren't. Yeah. And it was really good on them just to really portray that little difference. Something perceptible to you and me, but that if you met somebody on the street doing that, you might not even give it a second thought. To me, you say dullness, and I agree with you, but to me, I also use the word, the word like, there's almost an immaturity to their emotions. Mm -hmm. Like, because, so Roy, when he found out that a Blade, that a blade Runner had killed his buddy there, mm -hmm. he had kind of like almost an immature look about him like that mm -hmm. and like that's and those are those emotions trying to develop but they were very immature in how they came out right. almost almost inappropriate like 
Kind of so, like he's familiar with the idea of sadness, but not necessarily how to express it. Yes. Yeah. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. That's what I noticed there. And it's like, that's really good acting work, mm -hmm. as you said. And then, of course, yes, there's a lot of that dullness, even especially in Pris, mm -hmm. that I was noticing. Or in the other guy who didn't know what a tortoise was. Right, right. Yeah. He was almost uh, in defiance of his emotions. <laughs> We're trying anyways. Yeah. But he, he had a dark side to him, that one. Honestly, I think his big emotion there was anger. Yeah. Because he seemed to be triggered really easily. Do you think they all portrayed a different major emotion? I imagine their emotions were probably based on the memories that they had implanted in them. Or at least at least based on their life experiences, right? Because I think Leon, who was supposed to be like a construction worker, he's out there doing no big jobs, heavy jobs, but he's expected to be really manly. So, right. So he expresses more of a, I guess... Aggressiveness. Aggressive, yeah, aggressiveness. Roy is more of a leader, so he's probably a little bit more of a talker. He also has a lot of sadness in his eyes, too. A little bit. Um, Pris was definitely more lustful. She's certainly flexible, so you can pretty much put that together there. And then there's the, uh, the snake one. I forget what her specialty was, but... Uh, yeah, you know what her specialty is. <laughs> it's very Roman. But that's another thing that they got slaves doing there, mm -hmm. is like, you know, acts like that, that that would be considered they would be considered kind of heinous to make someone go through just for your entertainment and it's probably a bar full of humans using replicants or whatever to do these devious acts surely not somebody would know about that and close the place down right i don't know did you see how that guy was telling a blade runner to get out of his club no, that's fair that's fair you never know yeah i mean even tyrell had his own personal replicant there and rachel that he was keeping under wraps so who's to say other people in town aren't sure and then the cops are like, oh, he's got a replicant. Yep. Kill him. Mm. Great movie. Yeah. Put yeah. it all together at one. I say, considering considering how little actually happened in that, it felt pretty short. Yeah, right. <laughs> pretty confined considering the, the scale of the area they had to work with. Yeah. I don't know if I even saw any daylight in this film. Did you? A little a bit. A little bit at the beginning <laughs> when, when, they turn, when they went into the pyramid, the Tyrell pyramid. Yeah. But that was about it. It's a so. really dark future past. Past for us now, fam. It's, yeah. a, it's a future that we never knew. Thank God we're past that point. Congratulations, fam. It never got that bad. <laughs> fam, as always, I think we could keep going on about this, but I definitely want to hear what you got to say now. I bet a lot of you love this movie. Tell us your thoughts, too. Tell, if, tell us if, we're, uh, if there's something else we need to be considering, too, because uh, there was probably a lot to unpack there. We just can't see it all all the time when you watch it watch something once so i'm gonna say is it there's a lot going on in the environment there that you could probably discuss and, and point out say hey this this shows how the society's changed between now and then yeah so if you do feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind on this please do so in the comments guys but while you're at it if you're brand new i hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow and if you enjoyed the video leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a video while you're at it take a look at us on our socials we're on instagram and tiktok see what we're up to over there guys but until next time i think we're gonna leave it there this has been cocktail flicks i'm joe i'm dan we'll catch you on the flip side cheers to you fam cheers to you dan cheers to you joe later y'all <laughs>